Good morning, everyone. Trackman44 here. Uh, this is going to be the first quick fix for the day. We're doing a little outside job, uh, you know, for my son-in-law right now, and uh, it's a little toasty. It's uh, 96 degrees yesterday. I think they're calling for 96 and 98 today. And uh, being a little furnace fan, you know, I always have old furnace blowers and all that kind of stuff laying around. So uh, we we kind of make up these little fans. They're they're throwaway units. Use them till they burn up and throw them away, unless something is simple and wrong with it. And uh, that brings us to our point of the day. Y'all ever heard of a capacitor? Well, a capacitor, especially in a uh, uh, an indoor blower motor, is uh, is typically a run capacitor. And a run capacitor has one duty, and that duty is to limit the limit the amount of current that flows through the run winding of your PSC or permanent split capacitor motor. <laughs> And whenever they fail, they typically fail open or sharded. Um, occasionally, they will vary their capacitance, and I don't understand why. Uh, in the old days, that never ever happened. They either failed good or bad. But nowadays, sometimes you get these cheaper capacitors that do. You know, if it's a seven and a half microfarad capacitor, it may drop down to, to three or four uh, microfarads. Oh, and that causes it to to not operate the motor correctly. The motor will overheat and cycle off on the overload or burn itself up, or a microfarad when I talk about uh, a capacitor, is the uh, is a measurement of capacitance in this little device. So this is just a quick short video, show you what happened on my old blowers and uh, what the quick fix is and how to repair it. Not that I'm telling you to do it, follow along and I, I'll show you. Believe it or not, in the old days with an analog meter is much easier to, uh, to check for capacitance. Hopefully I can adjust this meter to where you can actually see the scale. I'm going to show you here, I'll see if you can see that, hopefully you can. The scale we're going to be concerned about is the bottom scale because that's the uh, the scale that's going to read the microfarad. And of course you got to set your selector if you're fortunate enough to have a meter that has a microfarad uh, uh, selection. Uh, rotate it to the, uh, to the MFD or capacitance scale. Now this is the one that came out of there. That's the, what I consider to be the faulty one. And what we'll do is we will shard out across the two terminals. No big deal. There's nothing but the, the battery voltage that's within your meter that actually charges it if it's capable of holding a charge. So it's not like you're going to hurt yourself or anything like that. But it would be a good idea to discharge it by any means possible. Oh, technically you're supposed to put a resistor across it, but that's silliness. Uh, that's one of those lab things, you know, uh, that people that uh, are, are very anal would have a tendency to do. Guys in the field, they got time for that stuff. You know, you just grab the capacitor, stick a screwdriver across it like that, kill it, and then go ahead and check it, you know. Uh, <laughs> You know, chances are, if you suspect it's wrong, uh, bad, that's, it, it probably is. But at any rate, look at our microfarad uh, reading right there. This is a, a four microfarad capacitor, and it should, once the battery charges it up, the battery in the meter is actually feeding the, the, the capacitor um, electrodes, for lack of a better term, inside the capacitor. And if you see, it just keeps dot, 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 dot it's an open capacitor. It's unable to charge the capacitor, which means that there's no limit to the current going through the run winding and the motor's going to fail eventually. So this capacitor is definitely defective. All right, now there's rules of thumbs about capacitors too. Start capacitors are always typically real high in microfarad rating as compared to a run capacitor. Um, typically a four or five ton run capacitor might have a 55 microfarad 35 microfarad whatever type of capacitor, whereas these little indoor blower motors are going to be ha have three, three and a half, four, five, seven and a half, and ten microfarads on them. Uh, the larger capacitance being um, reserved for the larger horsepower blowers, you know, three quarter horse, whatever. This little guy here is fractional horsepower, and uh, I mean it's probably a, a quarter, possibly a sixth horsepower. So it required a four microfarad capacitor. Now, when you're talking about capacitance, you're allowed a variance on that capacitance. And the run capacitor, you can have a 20% up or down variance on that reading. So a uh, four microfarad capacitor, we can replace it uh, with one of 20% higher than 4%, which is 0.8, 4.8 microfarad, almost a five, or uh, 3.2, which is four minus the, uh, the, the microfarad. So at any rate, if this was on the job, I would not do this, but it's my old throwaway blower, all I've got is a 5 microfarad capacitor. That's just a little bit out of the 20% uh, variance allowed, but I don't care. If this motor burns up today, um, it, it's, it'll serve its purpose to kind of keep us cool while we're working outside in the, in, the, um, in the heat. But at any rate, back to checking the capacitor. Again, the bottom scale, this is a 5 microfarad capacitor. I'll shard it out to make sure there's no battery charge or anything in it. And I'm just going to put the two terminals on there. And watch, it's reading 2.81. 
8.45, 5.22. Now let's see if it holds at 5.22. There it is. This micro, this uh, capacitance reads just a shade over 5 microfarad, 5.2. Again, that's a little bit too much for this motor, but do I care? <laughs> no, I do not. We'd rather have the cool air or the warm air blowing across us while we're sweating. If this was in your basement, in your house, I would not do it for you. If this was on a commercial job, would not do it for you. I would put the correct capacitor in. But again, this is one of those typical things, do as I say and not as I do, if you understand what I mean. Again, this is a PSC motor. It's a permanent split capacitor motor. And typically, your uh, motor is going to be wound or wired one of two ways. It's either going to have two individual brown wires that are designed specifically to go across the capacitor, or the capacitor has to be fed hot from one side of the line, or in this case, 110 volt line voltage. So this is going to be our line voltage coming in off of our rotary switch. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this one here onto the terminal that feeds the single brown wire off of that motor. Then we're going to take the other brown wire off of the motor and we're going to put it right here. And we're going to slide it right into the bracket. Easier said than done in some ways. Okay, I got that thing fit in there. It was uh, just a little odd the way it mounted in there. Now this is a, uh, a rotary switch. Um, actually, it's an aircraft rotary switch. That's got its own story. We won't go into that. But uh, <laughs> Once we make sure that nothing's going to come in contact with it when we turn power on, we can just set everything, the whole assembly back together and tighten it down. And if we're lucky, everything's going to be copacetic. When I say that's a rotary switch, what you can do with these multi-speed in, internal blowers is you can actually install a rotary switch and you can uh, successfully wire these to be multiple speeds for your, for your workshop. These things are really cool, man. Um, we just take old scrap material, you know. I got an old handle off of a, off of a, uh, uh, like a six foot patio door delivery, you know. They give you those nice handles to carry it with. I got some scrap iron here, just some Unistrut, or they call this Dexion, uh, angled uh, perforated plate or whatever. Screw that on the sides. And then you have to limit the amount of air going across them by, by dampering this here or blocking the discharge. I prefer to block the inlet myself. And uh, you put your ammeter on it and you throttle the amount of air going to it to get your amp draw down underneath the full load amp rating of the motor. And then you're good to go. And then you've got the uh, multiple speed switch over here. So we're going to turn it on and see what happens. Unfortunately, uh, i got to come up with another knob. I knocked it over not too long ago, you know, and broke my plastic knob off of this. And if you could read this, i got it marked off. And then it's uh, actually all four speeds are wired into that rotary switch. I've got uh, high, I've got medium high, medium low, and low. So I have to use my Leatherman. We'll turn it on one time. There she goes. I guess you can hear her. she's a blowing good. So if I drop it down, there's low, medium low, medium high, and high. And back again to off. So I got to come up with a little, uh, little twisty jobby do on that. And we're good to go. The only thing I need to do, I should strip these wire back and put the uh, amp probe on it make sure I'm not over amping. But uh, if I am over amping, it's going to shut down within three or four minutes of running out here in the, in the hot air anyway. So, like I said, this is a throwaway, throwaway blower. I don't care one, one bit about it. I've got dozens of those old motors salvaged off of jobs to change it with anyway. Okay, so there you have it. Just a quick five minute, uh, quick early morning repair uh, before we actually start the work day. Uh, we've got a bigger blower up at my son-in-law's house, but it's real big and bulky, you know, we're working over a ditch and everything, you know, and mud, and today mud, and uh, it's kind of hard and awkward to carry that big one. It was out of big old furnace, a 200,000 uh, BTU gas furnace, and uh, consequently, uh, its framework and stuff is much larger, and it's, it's a little inconvenient. Plus, it can only blow one guy at a time. So I'm taking this little guy up there, that'll be my personal air conditioner for the day. I just set it on the part of the ditch I'm working in, and let him wrestle that big old heavy thing around. Hey man, this is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here. <laughs>